Hey, sports card collectors and investors, my collectibles friends. Thank you very much for joining me again today. I hope everyone is having an awesome holiday if you're celebrating Christmas. Hope that you had a great Christmas yesterday. We are marching toward the new year, and it's hard to believe that this year is actually coming to an end. In some ways, it feels like it flew by, and in other ways, this one year has felt like 10 years. So hopefully we are moving into a more positive 2021. I'm excited for what's in store as far as the hobby is concerned. And today we're going to talk about one piece of the hobby and kind of just how it could possibly evolve. And I wanted to put this out there again. This channel is a conversation starter is the way I like to kind of think of it. I We have built a community here and it's been fantastic. I do get a lot of engagement in the comments and through DMs, etc. And it's been fantastic to be able to interact with you all. So this is not a channel where I'm really talking at you. It's more of like opening up the conversation and I like to hear from you all. And this is a subject that has been talked about a lot lately. It's fractional shares of collectibles and fractional shares specifically of sports cards is what we're going to talk about today. But before we do get into it, please subscribe, hit that notification bell so you are notified every time a new video comes out. We have more than 375 videos on the channel. Um, all of it is collectibles related, personal finance related, sports cards related. And so guys, all the fun stuff that maybe your, your regular friends aren't interested in talking about, that's what we're doing here. So we want to kind of be that go-to place that community for you to come to to be able to you know kind of talk about this and and we're excited to have you so please again hit that subscribe button and we'll go ahead and get started all right as many of you have probably seen there are new companies that have come up over the last 12 to 18 months we've got a few rally road collectible alt otis these are all companies um, from my understanding i believe all four of those are fractional share companies now otis and rally road they offer um, shares in a variety of different collectibles. So it might be classic cars, it might be fine wines, it might be sports cards, sports memorabilia. Um, whereas collectible is just focused around sports cards. And these are kind of, you know, startups to some degree. They're still trying to figure out kind of, you know, their game plan. Or I should say they have a game plan in place. It's just a matter of we haven't seen this over a long period of time to see kind of results, long term results from investing in collectibles. And so, but one thing I thought would be really interesting um, is as opposed to just kind of the high end items, because these fractional share companies, they zero in on really, really high end items like, like the 86 Fleer Michael Jordan rookie card in a PSA 10, for example, or, you know, you have all these different types of really high end items that the average Joe like myself wouldn't necessarily be able to afford. And so they'll go out and they'll you know be able to buy shares of these. And so, but what I was actually, what I'm really curious to see is if it evolves into more of like different types of funds in the sense that maybe if you want to invest in a certain player, maybe it's Patrick Mahomes, maybe it's not necessarily the RPA that's worth $200,000, but what if, you know, it's, you know, 25 Silver Prism PSA 10s? And that's in, you know, and that's something that you can invest in. Or maybe it's the rainbow of prism. It's, you know, silver, it's green, it's red in a PSA 10, etc. cetera. Um, and maybe there's, you know, certain, certain kind of lots of players, kind of like, you know, different kind of player type funds to invest in. Be very interesting, you know, if it does evolve into that, because what does that mean for the average collector? Well, it, it can be important in the sense that you see, you know, these collectibles are buying these items, the physical item, and vaulting it. They're putting it in a vault and they're holding it. And that's how, you know, it's that's how you're investing in it. They hold it. So, but they would have to also invest in those cards. So, for example, if they're going to buy, you know, 25 Patrick Mahomes Silver Prism PSA 10s, they're going to have to go out into the market and find those. And so that's where, you know, and then if it trickles down to other things, maybe it's not a $2,000 card or $5,000 card. Maybe it's $500 to $1,000 cards. Maybe it's $100 cards. And they're inventory, you know, buying up that inventory. That's a whole different ball game from what we're doing, from what we're seeing today. You know, it's because right now you have, you have investors, you have collectors that are buying into, you know, these cards. And, but in the fractional ownership companies are really playing on the high end. But what happens if the fractional owner companies, fractional ownership companies, start playing in the lower to middle, the, the middle class stuff, for for lack of a better word? Um, that could get really interesting because that means that you know they're going to start playing in where the average investor or collector plays, and that could really have an impact on pricing. It would also pull those cards out of circulation. You know, puts them then in the vault. 
that are being kind of invested in, and then they're not being bought and sold on the secondary market. They're vaulted. Um, so, you know, they're kind of almost like in a collection, you know, and they're they're gone. They're out of, you know, they're not, on e they're not being, you know, going back and forth on eBay. What sort of effect would that have on the market? I'm curious to kind of hear your thoughts on this. Could that bring in additional fractional share companies? Do they kind of maybe compete and weed each other out? I think it's very interesting because if you start getting into the micro transactions, if fractional companies start kind of lotting up more of the more of kind of the a smaller you know smaller investments into larger ones you know it's that could get really really interesting and kind of fun to watch really um, but I'm curious to hear what you all think about this sort of idea this is not something that I've heard of is going to happen but I'm just thinking of how could this how could this evolve this is a possibility in my mind this is my opinion I think this could be a possibility of how fractional companies do evolve and how that could affect kind of the average collector or investor um, and, but it could be could be pretty exciting because they're going to be looking into getting that, you know, buying that inventory. Um, and it's going to create, again, it's a supply demand thing that we're always looking at. And if they're vaulting all of that stuff, it's taking those off the market. So what is left on the market, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be interesting to watch. Like what, what does that mean for pricing? What does that mean for, you know, for everybody? So anyway, guys, curious to think, I know I'm kind of just putting an idea out into the world. I always like doing this because I like to get the feedback. I want to hear, with, and also I'd also like to hear, is that something you would even be interested in? You know, would you be interested in if a fractional company was offering, I don't know, you know, a, a, a draft class, you know, 2017 basketball draft class, you know, um, you know, type fund or, you know, a Patrick Mahomes type fund. If there was varieties of different options, would that appeal to you? Or are you still kind of like, eh, you know, I'm not really interested in it. And for the record, I haven't bought any fractional shares of anything. I'm still, I'm still in my due diligence mode with fractional share companies to see if I want to get involved or not. Um, but it's an interesting play. It's an interesting investment. It's an interesting uh, part of the hobby that has the ability to possibly expand, especially with you know what we've seen with institu institutional money coming in. Um, it has the ability to possibly expand. And I want to hear what your thoughts are and kind of you know what other ideas you have, what what other things could happen, um, pros and cons. You know, I'd like to hear from you all. So thank you again for joining, guys. I hope that everyone's having a great holiday. Please take care of yourselves, stay safe, stay healthy, and we will talk to you again soon. Take care.